Hi, this is the second video in the series of tips for the G4 method. This one is going to be about chords. Okay, hopefully you've seen the very first video, the general tips video, which is going to give you some ideas on hand position. This is important for the chords as it's important for everything else. Okay, but just as a reminder, I'm going to give you a quick uh, review of what we do for hand position. So, your thumb should be at the back of the neck. You should only be touching the strings with the fingertips, like this, okay? What we don't want is this, the thumb over the top, especially when we're playing chords, because we don't want this finger to touch that first string as well. When we're playing the first chord, which is C, we don't want to do that because that means that the first string is going to sound like this and it's going to ruin the whole, whole chord. Okay, so the first thing we know, or the first thing we need to know, is about reading chord boxes. Here's an example of a chord box. Now if you look at the chord box, it's actually drawn as if the guitar is held this way. Now clearly I don't want you to hold the guitar this way ever. This is not a good position to play in. But this is how the diagrams are represented. We have the strings going downwards on the page and we have the frets going across. Okay, so when we see a little round circle like this, that indicates where we're going to put our finger. So for the first chord, we're actually going to put our finger here on the second string. Now then, remember how we count the strings. Again, this is on the first video, the tips video. So we count the strings from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bottom to top, one to six, not top to bottom. Okay? So on your chord boxes, they will be numbered like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so again, here's the chord diagram with the finger on the second string and that chord is going to be called C. Now, strictly speaking, strictly speaking, that's not a full C chord, but for our purposes, as beginners, we're just gonna play a three note chord. That means we're gonna strum the bottom three strings, which is strings one, two, and three, all at once with a downward motion like this. Okay? And the axes that you see on the chord diagram represent the strings we're not gonna play. Okay? So here it is again. This is the C chord, or the, the one-fingered C chord. Right. Now let's try a different chord. This is G7. It's very similar to the C, one finger again, but this time we're gonna move the finger down to the first string or the E string and play a note which is F and strum the same three strings again. This sounds slightly different. Here's the first chord, C, and the second chord, G7. Here's what that looks like on the chord diagram. Okay, how about a third chord? This one's called G. And here's the chord diagram for that one. Now the way to put these together is probably to do four strums on each. So we're gonna do what we call a bar of music, which is four beats. One, two, three. You'll notice that I played the G7 twice there, so we go C, G7, G, G7, and we can begin again at C and keep going round. Okay, later on we'll get to two and three finger chords, but the principles are the same. We want to keep the fingers as straight on as possible, 
not like that, but like this, so that only the fingertips touch the strings. So we'll get a nice even chord and we don't get this kind of sound. Okay. Another thing to remember, when we're making chord progressions, that's a series of chords linked together, is that we want to make the transition from one chord to the next nice and smooth without any pauses in between. Now whenever you find one chord change difficult, that's the chord change that you want to do. For instance, if you do the G4, you may go C, G7, G, and then D7 later on. Most people will find the D7 quite a hard chord to change to. So rather than do all of those chords in that progression, one after another, it's a good idea if you do the G to D7. And keep practicing that particular change. It's much more efficient to just do that one change rather than keep going through all the chords that you're doing when you can already do the other chords quite easily. Okay, this applies to any chord progression at all. If you find a chord that's difficult to change to, go to the chord before it and change from that chord to the difficult chord. Okay, that's enough for chords. We'll see you next time on arpeggios.